First, the diagnostic scopes are introduced into the third ventricle to visualize the floor with the infundibular recess and the mammillary bodies. The floor is very thin and translucent. The endoscopic sheath is introduced carefully via the foramen of Munro into the third ventricle, avoiding damage to the fornix or choroid plexus. The floor of the third ventricle is perforated using the deck forceps. Then, a 3 French Fogarty balloon catheter is introduced into the initial fenestration, and the fenestration is carefully enlarged by slowly inflating the balloon. The balloon is pre-filled with saline to enable slow enlargement of the balloon, avoiding a pop-up phenomenon. Usually, multiple inflations are necessary to create a wide opening of the floor and the underlying liliquist membrane. After the fenestration has been achieved, the endoscopic sheath of the Little Lotta endoscope is introduced via the third ventriculostomy into the prepontine cistern. Inspection shows an additional membrane deep down in the prepontine space. This membrane is perforated with the deck forceps and the perforation is enlarged by spreading the branches. Additionally, scissors are used to cut the membrane to create a wide fenestration, which is necessary to allow a sufficient prepontine pulsatile CSF flow. The final inspection with the zero-degree diagnostic scope shows the wide fenestration of the floor as well as of the arachnoid membrane in the prepontine space the good pulsations of the floor are a favorable prognostic factor. Finally, the endoscope is withdrawn from the third ventricle and from the lateral ventricle. The cortical puncture channel is inspected for potential active bleeding.